Happy New Year, church. Welcome back. I hope you've had a great Christmas, even with, with all the restrictions that we have had on us at this time. I hope you're not feeling too sluggish after all the Christmas food, and I hope that you are feeling ready as we embark on this new year. 2021, I wonder what it's going to bring. It can't be worse than 2020, surely. <laughs> so let's start as we mean to go on at the beginning of this new year. Let us lift our voices. Let us make a declaration, a bold declaration of who our God is. Join with me now. sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all Sing for 
Let's pray together, everybody. Well, Heavenly Father, Lord, as we stand on literally the verge of a whole another 12 months, Lord, we want to put our lives in your hands right now, once again. Lord, I thank you that you already know what's to come. I thank you that, Lord, you are in control. You are sovereign. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to trust you, our Savior and our Lord. Thank you for just getting us through the last year. But Lord, I pray that you'd help us to raise our expectations of all that you are wanting to say and do in this coming year. So would you speak to us now through your word, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, do you know, the term 2020, it relates to perfect vision. Perfect vision. And how ironic <laughs> that in the year 2020, it was anything but that, wasn't it? We just didn't see the impact of coronavirus coming at all, did we? Certainly not in the way that it panned out. 2020 was meant to be a year of clarity of the mist clearing when it came to things like Brexit and whatever your political persuasion, you know, at the start of last year, we had a, a re-elected government, this time with a, a healthy majority, and it felt like it was going to be the year when we were really going to see things happening after so much deadlock. Do you remember that word? And yet deadlock became locked down. And it wasn't the start of a new decade that we had all hoped it would be. However, one of the things that has really encouraged me, and I don't know if you really spotted this, uh, is that over the previous three years, Joe Blake and the Engage team have been writing and recording some new songs. And in the month preceding lockdown, back in February, we started releasing these tracks just a couple at a time. And then every month, a couple more, right through to September. Actually, let me take you back to the beginning of March 2020. And I want to replay you the update video that we sent out back then. But I want you to hear it in the light of what we now know was going to hit us just a couple of weeks later that same month. Hi church, it's Ollie here with your March update. Can you believe it's March already? I hope you've been listening to the new songs of the music project, Not Finished Yet, that we started releasing last month. So Joe and the team have been writing songs over the last three years that we've already been singing in church. And we've done some demos, which we're gonna be releasing two a month. And the next two are gonna be coming out on March the 15th. So watch out for that. Go to YouTube, that's where you can find them, or on all music platforms. You know, we really wanna resource you this year. James was talking at the end of January about being great commissioned disciples and everything we're doing at the moment, certainly in terms of what we're teaching into church, is about how we can be those great commissioned disciples, how we can stay on the mission that Jesus has called us to. So you'll know, we've just finished our series, Who Dares Wins? And I've been encouraging us, daring us to not give up, daring us to strip off all the things that are slowing us down and daring us to take up and to wear the things that God has given us for living a godly life and for fighting the fight of faith. So I hope that's been really encouraging to you. Jill Parkinson did a brilliant talk where she illustrated this from the perspective of a parent. Go and check it out. And Neil Parkinson, in his role as chair of trustees, he was encouraging us, daring us on Sunday morning to trust God wholeheartedly, especially when it comes to things like our money. He was inspiring us with all that God has been doing through our church in Treadworth and through the wider Kingfisher family over the last year. But what more could God do if we were to trust him wholeheartedly? And that's what brings us to this new series at the beginning of March that I've called Relentless Trust. 
If we are going to be the disciples who stay on mission, who stay on course, who fight the fight of faith, who keep running the race, who stay faithful, then we need to be trusting God wholeheartedly. And we're going to be learning how to do that through the life of Joseph. You can find this story in Genesis 37 to 50. I would encourage you, go and read it before we even start on Sunday morning. Or at least read the first chapter, read chapter 37. Because if you look at the story of Joseph, here was a man who was given a God-given dream. But it was going to be another 13 years before he even saw that dream coming into being. And you look at what he went through when he was thrown down a well by his brothers, when he was sold into slavery, when he was accused, falsely accused of sexual assault, when he was left languishing in jail. And you can ask the question, where was God? Where was God working when Joseph was going through all that? And yet, Joseph trusted God. He trusted that there was a bigger picture. He held on to his faith. And we read that the Lord was with Joseph through all those things, working out his plan. We know that God is good. We know that God always has a plan. And when we know that, it doesn't matter what circumstances come our way, we can hold on and we can keep going. So I really hope this is gonna be inspiring and helpful and encouraging for you. So I hope to see you there Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. It doesn't matter what circumstances come our way. We can hold on and we can keep going. It's almost prophetic. <laughs> I mean, it's almost as if God was preparing us for the months ahead, don't you think? You know, our last service together on the 15th of March, before everything shut down, was all about the proximity of God. And the two tracks that were released on that day were called there's always hope and serenity. Now, I don't think that was a coincidence. You know, all the songs are still available on YouTube and Spotify, so do go and have another listen. And, you know, if you want to hear any of the talks from last year, I've put them all together in one long document. And I would love to send it to you if you think that it might be helpful. But I want to draw your attention to the title of that music project, because it is going to frame these first few weeks of this new year. Just three words. Not finished yet. Not finished yet. Now, that's not a comment on COVID, by the way, but a statement about God's work in our lives and in our church. And if you weren't already encouraged by that statement last year, then I am praying that it is going to really impact you and me at the beginning of 2021. You know, just prior to Advent, we did a whole series on the power of song called How Shall We Sing the Lord's Song? And I hope it inspired you to, to use the Lord's song as a means of remembering who he is, encouraging yourself and as a weapon of spiritual warfare. You know, we need that. And how blessed are we that we have these homegrown songs that have been written out of the things that God has been saying to us as a local church that we can use so effectively. You know, keep writing, Joe and Ben and Ethan and the rest of the team. We're right behind you. You know, the lyrics of those not finished yet songs were such words of hope during a really difficult time when everything was closing and stopping or being cancelled or as health deteriorated or jobs were lost or in our case here at church when the doors were finally shut. You know, God just kept reminding us, this isn't the end. I'm with you. You can trust me. You know, Yulia Hartso, she designed some cards with some of the, the lyrics from these songs on them, such as, there's no power to stop all that you have begun. Or what about this one? You're setting the stage for amazing things. Yes, come on. Or what about this one? You were faithful then, you are faithful still. 
Or what about in this life, in the next? We've not seen anything yet. Or what about lead me to your promised land to see that this was not the end? Or in his grace, the dead end is a comma. I love that. <laughs> I love that lyric. You know, if you haven't brought any of um, Yulia's cards yet, yet, then ask her if she's still got some available. Get some. Put them up around your house. And finally, how about this one? God, I believe you're not finished yet. You know, that lyric gave the title to the whole music project. And it's from a song called So Much More. So Much More. After a year of things being stripped back and disrupted and disconnected, it's tempting to get disheartened. And I know that last year has taken a toll on many of us. But my message to you this morning is God hasn't finished with us yet. And there is so much more to look forward to as we launch into 2021. And we're going to sing this song together in a bit. But let me just read these lyrics in full. It starts, oh, my soul, why are you low, my soul? It's not the end of the road, so get up and go. Oh, my soul, you're free to roam, my soul. There's so much more to behold that God wants to show. Oh, my soul, it's good to know my soul. My God is still on the throne and calls me his own. Oh, my soul, nothing comes close, my soul. Joy waits beyond my control to God given hope. It is so important for me to speak to my soul rather than just listen to my feelings. Now is a good time to be doing that. Those words were inspired by the Psalms, by the way. Psalm 42 verse 5, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my Lord. You know, the song goes on. There's so much more. God, I believe you're not finished yet. You have not finished with me. It's you that I seek. You're more than enough. You are sufficient for me. I mean, what a declaration and a great New Year's resolution. And then here comes the bridge, and I love this. And we've been singing this for a good couple of years now, and it's a dangerous prayer. I cannot condition a love unconditional. Shake up my addiction to what keeps me comfortable. You know, be careful what you pray. You know, last year felt like a real shaking in so many ways, out of our comfort zones, having to think outside the box and learning new ways of doing things, including church. And, you know, I don't think we will ever quite be the same again. And that's okay. Because the verse that I've been drawn to for today, it comes from Isaiah 43. And it's verses 18 and 19, if you want to turn with me, where God says this. He says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now, I know this specifically speaks of Israel at a certain time in their history, but I think we can apply this to our lives too, because, you know, God is always working. He is still moving. Just maybe 2021 is going to be the year when we see things more clearly. When we perceive what God is doing, when we look for the so much more, rather than trying to hold on to what has been before. 
And actually, at this time in our church's history, because of how old we now are, this is uh, promising to be an interesting year. I always like to remind us that this first Sunday of the year is our birthday as a church. That's when Kingfisher started in 1993, which makes us 28 years old. Happy birthday, everybody. Now, you know how different anniversaries are celebrated with things like paper for a first year, wood for a fifth year, tin for a tenth year, or, or silver for a 25th year? Well, what I've discovered is that there isn't officially much for a 28th year. <laughs> Except some have suggested that it is an orchid. An orchid. And an orchid apparently represents pure love, beauty, and toughness. I quite like that as a description of the church. You know, the meaning of orchid is also related to fertility or virility. So maybe we're going to have a baby boom at Kingfisher this year. You know, I know the Furzes and the Gregories are already expecting, but maybe there is more, I wonder. But more than that, let's be praying that we are going to see a spiritual multiplication this year. New babes in Christ and our impact and influence as a local church expanding. There's so much more. But also, 28 is an interesting age to reach because it means we have just completed another cycle of seven as a church. And we're just embarking on the next. Why is that interesting, I hear you ask? Well, the number seven has real significance in the Bible. You know, right back in Genesis, we read that God created the world in six days and on the seventh, he rested. We still have a seven-day week. And throughout the Bible, the number seven is seen in connection with so many things representing divine completion, exoneration, the fulfillment of promises. Seven is the most used number in the Bible. Over 700 times we see it. And over 54 times in the book of Revelation alone, as we read of the completion of all things. You know, in our evening services, we've recently been going through the, the seven festivals or Jewish holidays, as outlined in the Old Testament, God's plan of salvation. And over and over again, we see the pattern of seven repeated in the life of Jesus. It's one example, but he made seven I am statements about himself that we read in the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate to salvation. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine. But, you know, there is a particular rule of seven that we read about in the book of Deuteronomy that I want to focus on for a moment, which I think is particularly pertinent for us right now if we want to see there's so much more. Let me read it to you. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. It says, At the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release, remission, pardon from debt. This is the regulation for the release. Every creditor shall forgive what he has loaned to his neighbor. He shall not require payment, repayment from his neighbor and his brother because the Lord's release has been proclaimed. I mean, wouldn't that be great to get all your debts canceled every seven years? But, you know, I want us to look at this, spiritually speaking, as you review the last seven years, are there things that stand out for you? Emotional debts that are outstanding with other people, hurts that haven't been healed, wrongs that haven't been righted, 
I mean, truth is you will never see the new thing or perceive what might be springing up if you are looking back and holding on to what was. And maybe what you need to do at the beginning of this new year is to grant a release, to forgive and to forget the former things and not dwell on the past. You know, it's quite feasible that some of us have got off track. We're still dwelling in the past. And as we look at our spiritual surroundings right now, we might well describe it as a wilderness, a wasteland. But listen, God says that he is making a way in and a way through and is not located behind you. It is seen as you look ahead. What better time to release and to be released than at the beginning of this next seven years? You know, Lisa Seagrave, one of our elders, was telling us that when she was praying recently, the word forgiveness kept coming up. And she believed that this was a word for our church. For now, that God was speaking to her about the importance of true forgiveness, that there is a a lack of understanding maybe when it comes to what this really is, but how important it is to our mental, spiritual, and even our physical health. Some of us need a better understanding of the truth that God has forgiven you, and he will forgive you no matter what. You think you've done. 1 John 1, 8 to 9 says that if we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. You can be forgiven and cleansed right now. But are you holding yourself in suspended judgment? Are you trying to make yourself pay for things you have done wrong? It's time to be released. It's only when we communicate openly with God and receive his forgiveness that it then becomes possible to truly forgive ourselves and to forgive other people. It's also worth noting that asking God, For forgiveness may involve letting go of things you have been doing. We read about this in the book of Acts, chapter 19. says that many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. And a number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. Now, you've got to understand a drachma was a a silver coin worth a day's wages. So we're looking at 50,000 days wages. I mean, that must have been tough to let go of. And yet here's what we read next. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. Wow. You know, giving up the former things. Letting go of things you used to do, not dwelling in what was, releasing yourself and others from debt might sound like a high price to pay. But it is exactly, it is exactly what it takes to see the so much more. If there are things keeping you turned towards the past, if there are people you need to forgive or things you need to give up, can I encourage you to apply this word today? Go get that better understanding of forgiveness if that's what it takes and talk to your connect group leaders. Get them to pray with you and for you or or connect group leaders, talk to your community leaders or community leaders, talk to me or maybe It's the people in leadership who you are finding it hard to forgive. Or maybe I've upset you in some way. Talk to God. But please don't 
hold on to it for a moment longer. You know, we put so many conditions on things, don't we? If they say they're sorry, then I'll forgive them. If I stay clean, then I'll stop beating myself up. If, then, if, then. Actually, we need to change that to the words of the psalmist. Yet I will. Yet I will. God's love towards us is unconditional. And you cannot condition it. He forgives us not because we start getting everything right. Not because we, we've paid our dues. It's unconditional because Jesus has already paid the debt for us when he died upon a cross. And until Jesus comes back to judge the world, we are in the year of the Lord's favor. And it's a year of release, everybody. And the end of another seven years of our church history, especially after the year we've just had, is a great time to remember that. A great time to act upon it. Too many people give up on themselves or give up on other people or give up on church or give up on God. And if you've been struggling, I'm here to tell you today that God hasn't given up on you. And he says that he will finish what he started because it's not finished until God says it is finished and he has not finished yet. Philippians 1 verse 6, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished. When? On the day when Christ Jesus returns. That's when we know things are finished. So we need to keep going until that day comes. You know, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he made seven statements. That's the number seven again. One of those statements was, it is finished. But we know from his resurrection that that wasn't the end right there. What he was saying in that moment was, I am paying your debt in full so you can go free, released, forgiven, a new start. Because everything starts and ends with Jesus. Listen to his words that we read in the final chapter of the last book in the Bible. And he says, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And we're not there yet. So let's do what can be done right now. Let's see this as a year of release. Let's forgive others in the same way that God has forgiven us. Let's speak to our own souls and make that free will choice to put our trust in the one who holds us in his hands. And let's run with strength and energy and be the pure, loving, beautiful church that he needs us to be. Let's look for the new thing that God is wanting to do in this time, to be part of his plan in 2021, making a way in the wasteland and streams in the wilderness. Treadworth Church, we are not finished yet. And there is so much more to come, so much more for us to do. So Lord, dangerous as it is to pray this prayer, I'm praying that you would continue to shake up our addiction to what is comfortable. Convict us where we have put conditions on what you want us to do. And as we let go of things we have been holding on to, as we learn to walk in true forgiveness, Lord, may this year truly be a year of release and fruitfulness in so many new and wonderful ways.
And everybody said, Amen. Why are you low, my soul? It's not the end of the road So get up and go Oh, my soul You're free to roam, my soul There's so much more to behold That God wants to show Louder than the unbelief 
So I'll do my part, Lord. I'll sing a song, I'll raise a prayer, I'll lift my hands to heaven. You're alive, Lord. That's why I raise my song to you now. That's why I give this time to you, Lord. Come on, just make room for him. Clear out the space, clear out the distractions. Even now, Lord. Even now, Lord. You are king. You are sovereign. You are here with me. Well, as we launch back into our routine in this new year, as you children get back to school, as you get back to work, I'm praying that this is going to be a fruitful start to the year. I hope you've been encouraged this morning. Stick with us. Come back next week for the next in this series, Not Finished Yet. And don't forget to join us tonight as well. As we revisit, we go back to that series we've been doing on the festivals. And uh, it's, it's so encouraging knowing that God's plan of salvation that was talked about all those thousands of years ago is still being outworked, still giving us hope and encouragement in this present age. So come and join us tonight, six o'clock. See you then.
生。